telescope and it can make observations of 25 centimeters per pixel from 250 kilometers. That means looking at uh, a couple of car, a car for example, in Munich from here. Okay. And we can look and see rocks maybe that big on the surface of Mars. And as I said, five megapixels, nothing. We do 800 megapixels. And if we really push it, we can do a gigapixel. But of course, you can't buy this in interdiscount. You can't even pick it up to carry it away. It's 65 kilograms. But it's really quite a remarkable instrument. And I'll show you an example of what it can do. This is an artist's impression of the Phoenix lander. Phoenix was launched by NASA in 2007 and landed on the surface of Mars in May 2008. When it landed, of course, we could use high-rise to watch it because the distance across here is about three meters. And sure enough, we could see it. We could see not only the lander, we could see the parachute on the floor, the back shell, and even the heat shield. All of the bits that came off it. Not only that, we could even watch the lander as it was going down through the atmosphere. Here is the Phoenix lander on its parachute, crossing a large crater called Heimdall. It landed up here somewhere. But here you can, you can see in the inset, we've got the parachute, the lander itself, and you can even see the strings attaching the parachute to the lander. But of course, we don't only do engineering work, we do science. And as we're here in Switzerland, have an avalanche. Here, we were observing a remarkable, a remarkable event. As we were flying over, a northern escarp in the northern region of Mars, just as we were going over, an avalanche went off. And we caught it. I'm going to come back to that in a little while. So now, HiRISE has made many wonderful observations. And we've also used it to look at southern processes that are going on near the south pole of Mars, and in particular to be interested in this sublimation process that goes on. This is one area that we've been paying attention to. It's called Inca City because of all this remarkable structure that you can see on the surface. Now, don't ask me to explain that structure. I don't know, and nobody knows how that arose. But it's very, very interesting because when the sun rises, at the, at the beginning of southern spring, the sun shines on these slopes, and these slopes are all rather regular and in different orientations. And so you can look and see how fast sublimation occurs and if there's any effect on the way in which the sun illuminates that area. So we chose that in advance as one of our monitoring areas with high rise. Incidentally, that is the field of view of high-rise. We've got about 800 megapixels in there. So what did we see? We saw that. Don't be frightened, ladies. Okay, in particular, don't be frightened now because I'm going to blow it up. Well, those are the spiders from Mars. You want to see some more? We've got a few like that. They even join hands and go marching down the street together. They even collect, there are even different species of spider. Like here. You've got little fat ones, you've got spindly ones, 
You've got ones that like they're cracking up. So where do these things come from? How are they produced? Well, a clue comes from when you monitor these things and you look at them many times over the Martian season. And you see things like that. Here we have some spiders, but look at this black stuff. These black deposits and surrounded by lighter deposits all around them. You can even see little fans of material coming, what appear to be coming out of the surface, surrounded by this brighter material. Now, of course, the first thing that you do when you see something like that is you want to see, heavens, how is that evolving? What's going on there? And so you take more images and space them closer and closer together until you find out what's going on. And then, of course, you can make a little movie. And you can see the fans and this dust material gradually evolving with the bright material going around. And then gradually they fade away as you get to the end of southern summer and poof, they're gone. Well, how about this region here? Here you can see those fans developing and then suddenly with their bright surroundings, contrast enhanced in this particular case, and then gradually as we move towards the end of the season, they disappear. So what on earth is going on? Let's do some physics. First of all, here's a little, a little montage. When the sun comes up over the horizon in the, south, in the southern hemisphere, you don't see these structures at all. But then, just a matter of five weeks later, you see the fans appearing with their bright structures around them. Then, just a few days later, those bright structures disappear. And then gradually, as you move towards the end of southern summer, everything's beginning to disappear and fade away. The physics behind it appears to be this model. What you have on the surface is a one meter slab of carbon dioxide ice. And this carbon dioxide ice is translucent to sunlight. So the sunlight shines through the ice and strikes the surface below. The surface is quite dark and so the light is absorbed, so it heats up. But the thing about carbon dioxide ice is, it's completely opaque to thermal infrared radiation. So the heat can't get out. So what does it do? The heat starts to melt the base of the carbon dioxide ice slab the pressure in there begins to build and it builds and it builds and then it finds a weakness and whoosh, whoops, out it comes. Out it comes and it comes out with an incredible force. The velocities that we calculate can be anything up to 100 meters per second coming out of this vent. And it drags with it the dust the dust that it's got, it collects 